My husband has been secretly supporting his sister and their kids for years. I discovered they weren't even related and the kids were actually his. I need to explain everything from the start to make sense of this mess. I met Jack in 2018 at our mutual friend Mike's housewarming party. I wasn't interested in dating then because of my previous relationship. My ex, who I dated for three years, had cheated on me with my roommate Amy. I found out when I came home early from a work trip and found them together in our apartment. I had to move back with my parents and spent six months saving money for a new place. I met Jack right after I got my own apartment. He worked as a software developer at a big tech company downtown. We kept running into each other at group events because we had the same friend circle. Mike later told me Jack had asked about me after that first party and started showing up to more events hoping to see me. Jack was different from my ex in every way. He had a stable job, his own apartment, and clear goals for his future. He asked about my marketing job and remembered small details about my projects. After seeing each other at group events for two months, he finally asked for my number. Our relationship moved fast after that. We went from casual dating to being exclusive within three months. By six months, we were talking about moving in together. My parents, especially my dad, thought it was too soon. They kept bringing up my ex and how I needed more time to heal. My younger sister Dana agreed with them and said I was rushing things. I first met Jack's family at one of their Sunday dinners. His parents lived in a big house in the suburbs where Jack grew up. His sister Emma lived nearby with her two kids, Tom, eight, and Lisa, six. Emma was a single mom, she told me her husband left when Lisa was just six months old. I liked how close their family was. They had dinner together every Sunday, celebrated all holidays together, and helped each other out regularly. Emma seemed nice at first. She invited me for coffee dates and shopping trips when Jack was at work. She told me about her life as a single mom and how hard it was to date while raising two kids. She worked as an accountant at a small firm and seemed to manage okay financially, though she mentioned it was tough sometimes. Jack spent a lot of time with his niece and nephew. He picked them up from school twice a week, took them to soccer practice, and helped with homework. I thought it was sweet how involved he was in their lives. Emma said the kids saw him as a father figure since their own dad wasn't around. We got married in 2019 after dating for a year. My family thought it was too soon, but Jack's family was excited. We had a medium-sized wedding with about 100 guests. Emma was very involved in the planning and even insisted on helping with the seating arrangements and decorations. Looking back, she was almost too involved, changing things I had picked to what she thought was better. After marriage, we rented an apartment for two years while saving for a house. We both wanted kids but agreed to wait until we were more financially stable. We found a house in 2021 and used our combined savings for the down payment. The house needed work, new kitchen, updated bathrooms and fresh paint everywhere. We spent weekends fixing it up together. The problem started this February. Jack began staying late at work, saying his team had a big project coming up. He was promoted to senior developer last year, so I believed him when he said he had more responsibilities. It started with one or two late nights a week, then became almost every day. In March, I noticed he was spending more time at Emma's house. He would go there after work or spend entire weekends there. When I asked, he said Emma needed help with house repairs. Her basement had flooded, and she couldn't afford contractors. I offered to help too, but he said Emma was embarrassed about the state of her house and preferred if just he helped. I started noticing money issues in April. We had agreed to save $1,000 each month for our future family, but our savings weren't growing. I checked our bank statements and found regular transfers to an account I didn't know, sometimes $2,000 or more monthly. Some transfers were marked as home repair or emergency fund. I finally confronted Jack about the money in May. He admitted he had been helping Emma financially because she lost her job three months ago. He said she was too proud to ask their parents for help, and he couldn't watch his niece and nephew struggle. She had fallen behind on her mortgage payments and needed help with basic expenses. Then came the bigger revelation. Jack said Emma was struggling with depression and couldn't handle being a single parent anymore. He had been basically raising the kids for months, picking them up from school, taking them to doctor appointments, helping with homework, and even attending parent-teacher conferences. Now he wanted us to adopt them officially. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. We had our own plans, traveling, saving money, having our own kids when we were ready. Now Jack wanted to adopt two children without even discussing it with me first. He had made this huge decision that would change our entire lives without including me. When I tried to explain my concerns, Jack got angry. He said I was being selfish and that family comes first. He brought up my broken family background, my parents divorced when I was 12, and said I didn't understand the importance of keeping families together. 
This hurt because both my parents stayed involved in my life after their divorce. Jack left three days ago to stay at Emma's house. His parents called yesterday to tell me I was being unreasonable. They said Jack was just being a good brother and uncle, and I should be proud of him for stepping up. His mom said I was being immature and needed to understand that marriage means supporting your spouse's family too. I found out today that he's been paying all of Emma's bills, mortgage, utilities, car payment, even her credit card debt. Money that was supposed to be for our future is gone. Our savings account is almost empty. I checked our credit card statements and found charges for groceries, kids' clothes and even a family vacation to Disney World that I knew nothing about. I don't know what to do anymore. Should I try to work this out? Am I wrong for feeling betrayed? How can I trust him again after he hid such big financial decisions from me? Update when I need to update everyone on what's happened since my last post. Things got much worse than I expected. After reading everyone's comments about financial fraud and protecting myself, I decided to look deeper into our accounts. The day after my post, Jack came home wanting to talk. He apologized for hiding the money transfers and said he should have been honest about helping Emma. We sat at the kitchen table for three hours going through our finances. He showed me emails from Emma about her job loss and bills she couldn't pay. He promised to be more open about financial decisions and suggested we set a fixed monthly amount to help her until she found a new job. I agreed to work on our issues and we made a plan. We would help Emma with basic expenses, $1,000 monthly for three months while she job hunted. Jack said he would stop making random transfers and would tell Emma she needed to find work soon. He even called his parents that night to ask if they could help with the kids while Emma went to job interviews. The next day, I started organizing our home office to make a proper budget. In the back of Jack's desk drawer, behind some old warranties, I found loan documents. Jack had taken out a second mortgage on our house for $200,000. The papers were dated March 15th, right when he started spending more time at Emma's house. My signature was on them, but I never signed anything. He must have forged it. I spent the entire next day going through every piece of paper in the office. I found bank statements from an account I didn't know existed. Jack had opened a separate account and was depositing part of his salary there. He got a raise last year that I didn't know about, instead of telling me, he put the extra money in the secret account. Then I found something that made everything worse. Jack had used the second mortgage money to buy a house. The one four blocks away that Emma and the kids moved into last month. I remembered when they moved, Jack spent a whole week helping them, saying Emma had found a cheap rental through a friend. But it wasn't a rental. The house was purchased for $450,000, with Jack and Emma both listed as owners. I called my friend Lisa who works at a bank for advice. She said taking out a second mortgage without both owners' consent was fraud. She helped me freeze our joint accounts and recommended a lawyer who specializes in financial fraud cases. When I confronted Jack about the house, he didn't even try to deny it. Instead, he told me something that changed how I saw our entire marriage. He said he and Emma had made plans years ago about raising the kids together. When Emma's supposed husband left, which I now doubt even happened, Jack promised to always be there as a father figure. They had some kind of agreement that he would help raise and provide for the kids. I spent the next few days going through old photos and social media posts. I found pictures from before I met Jack, he was at every birthday party, school event, and holiday with Emma and the kids. There were family vacations where Jack went along, even when he told me he was on business trips. In some photos, the kids were calling him daddy in the comments. I talked to my old friend Sarah who went to college with Jack. She told me something I never knew. Jack and Emma were always unusually close. At college parties, Emma would drive two hours to visit him. She would stay in his dorm room, saying she was too tired to drive back. Sarah said their friends thought it was weird but assumed it was just because Emma was a single mom who needed support. Yesterday, Emma started sending me long text messages. She said I was destroying their family by questioning Jack's commitment to the kids. She said they had a special bond that I could never understand. The kids called him dad when I wasn't around, and she said they had been doing this since before I came into the picture. Last night, I checked Jack's phone while he was showering. There were hundreds of daily texts between him and Emma going back years. They talked constantly about everything, the kids' schedules, inside jokes, plans for the future. They had detailed conversations about the house purchase from months ago, discussing pink colors and furniture placement like it was their shared home. The worst part was finding their shared budget spreadsheet. Jack wasn't just helping with necessities, he was paying for everything. Emma's car payments, gym membership, hair appointments, yoga classes, new clothes, kids' private school tuition, family vacations. All while telling me we needed to save more money for our future. I packed some clothes and moved to my parents' house this morning. Jack keeps calling and texting, saying other families help each other financially all the time. 
He says I'm overreacting and that plenty of brothers support their sisters. His parents call too, saying I'm being selfish and trying to come between their children's special bond. My mom pointed out something I hadn't considered. In the five years I've known Emma, she never dated anyone seriously. Anytime a man showed interest in her, Jack would find problems with him. Too old, too young, wrong job, bad with kids, there was always some reason Emma shouldn't date him. Last year, she was offered a job in another city with better pay, but Jack convinced her to turn it down because it was too far from family. I've talked to a divorce lawyer and started documenting everything. I don't know what's really going on between Jack and Emma, but I know I can't trust anything they tell me anymore. Update 2 After seeing everyone's comments suggesting something more was going on, I hired a private investigator. I found one through my lawyer who specializes in family cases. It was expensive, $3,000 upfront, but what he discovered was worth every penny. The pie started by looking into Emma's background. The first big discovery was that Emma isn't Jack's biological sister. She came to live with Jack's family when she was 16 and he was 12. Her mom died in a car accident, and she was going to enter foster care. Jack's parents knew her mom through church and offered to take her in. Here's the strange part, they never legally adopted her. The Pi found old court records showing they applied for guardianship but never completed the adoption process. They told everyone she was their adopted daughter, but legally, she wasn't. They kept all this quiet because Emma supposedly didn't want people to know about her past. The Pi also investigated Emma's supposed ex-husband. She had told everyone he was a businessman who traveled a lot and left her when Lisa was a baby. But there were no marriage records, no divorce papers, no legal documents at all. The Pi checked records in every state where Emma had lived. This man didn't exist. Then came the birth certificates. Neither Tom nor Lisa had a father listed. The Pi found medical records showing Jack was listed as Emma's emergency contact for both pregnancies. He was present at both births, listed as family member on hospital documents. The investigator dug into old social media posts. Most were deleted, but he found archived versions and posts on friends' pages. When Emma was pregnant with Tom, she was living in Jack's old apartment. They told everyone they were temporary roommates while she got back on her feet after her husband left. But neighbors from that time told the Pi they acted like a couple. The Pi found their old high school yearbooks. There were notes and messages between Jack and Emma that seemed more romantic than sibling-like. He found photos from school events where they went as each other's dates, before his parents took her in. I took this information to Jack's college friend Mike. After a few beers, he admitted what really happened. Jack and Emma started dating when they were teenagers, shortly after she moved in. They kept it secret because they lived in the same house. When Emma got pregnant the first time, they created the story about her husband to avoid questions. Mike said several of their college friends knew the truth. Emma visited Jack at college almost every weekend. They shared a dorm room, and everyone knew they were together. They thought it was weird but didn't judge because Emma wasn't really his sister. The Pi also found financial records showing joint accounts and property purchases going back years. They bought a timeshare together in 2016, before I met Jack. They owned a car together that was sold right before our wedding. The house they just bought wasn't their first joint purchase, they had invested in rental properties together under an LLC. I finally confronted Jack with all the evidence. He broke down and admitted everything? He and Emma had been together since he was 14 and she was 18. When she got pregnant at 23, they decided to keep the relationship secret to avoid judgment. His parents helped create the story about Emma's husband because they were worried about their reputation in church. Jack said he married me because Emma thought it would look suspicious if he stayed single forever. They planned to raise the kids together while maintaining the lie about being siblings. The house he bought recently was meant to be their real home, he was planning to gradually spend more time there until he eventually left me. The worst part was learning that the kids knew the truth. They called Jack dad because he is their father. They were told to call him uncle around me and others to maintain the lie. All those times he helped with homework or attended school events, he wasn't being a supportive uncle, he was being their father. I asked Jack why they involved me in their lie instead of just living their life together. He said they thought having him marry someone else would make their sibling relationship more believable. They needed a cover story, and I was it. Years of my life were wasted being part of their lie. Update 3 The divorce is finally settled. My lawyer used the evidence of financial fraud to negotiate a good settlement. I kept our house, and Jack has to pay off the second mortgage he took out in my name. I also got 70% of our savings and investments as compensation for the fraud. The whole process took less time than expected because Jack didn't want to risk the truth coming out in court. Jack and Emma moved to Colorado last month. My friend who still follows them on social media said they bought a house there and enrolled the kids in a new school. 
They're living together openly now, telling people they met two years ago through work. They deleted all their old social media posts and created new accounts with their fake story. The kids seem happy based on the photos I've seen. They don't have to hide anymore or pretend Jack is their uncle. Tom is playing soccer for his new school team, and Lisa joined a dance class. Sometimes I feel bad for them, they spent years lying about their own parents because of Jack and Emma's choices. Jack's parents tried to buy my silence last week. They offered me $50,000 to sign a non-disclosure agreement. They're worried about their reputation at church and in their social circle. I refuse the money. I haven't told everyone the truth, but I won't promise to keep their secret either. They made their choices, and now they have to live with the consequences. My old neighbors still ask questions about what happened. They think Jack left me for his sister, which is technically true but not in the way they think. Some people in our friend group have figured out parts of the truth. Sarah pieced it together from things she remembered from college. Mike feels guilty for keeping their secret all these years and has apologized to me several times. I got a job offer in Seattle last week. It's a marketing director position with better pay and opportunities for advancement. I accepted it immediately. The real estate agent is coming next week to list our house. I need a fresh start somewhere new, away from all the whispers and questions. My lawyer helped me fully separate our finances. I found more secret accounts and joint purchases that Jack and Emma had made over the years. There was even a college fund for the kids that Jack had been contributing to since before I met him. All the money he said we were saving for our future was actually going to his other family. I went on a few dates recently, but I'm taking things slow. It's hard to trust people after discovering such a huge lie. My therapist says it's normal to feel this way and that I need time to process everything that happened. At least now I understand why Jack always changed the subject when I talked about having our own kids. My parents have been surprisingly supportive through all this. Even my dad, who was skeptical about Jack from the start, hasn't once said I told you so. They helped me pack up the house and are driving with me to Seattle next month. My sister Dana found me a good therapist there who specializes in helping people after betrayal. The hardest part isn't losing Jack, it's realizing that our entire relationship was fake. Every family dinner, every holiday, every conversation about our future, every moment I thought we were building a life together. It was all part of their cover story. I was never his wife, I was just a convenient way to hide his real relationship. I still have questions that will probably never be answered. Like why they chose me specifically, or how they managed to lie for so long without slipping up. But I'm done trying to understand their choices. I'm focusing on rebuilding my life and moving forward. Sometimes the best revenge is just living well and leaving the past behind.